Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is a how-to video. And today's video comes from a question that I got from Mohammed. He asks, I would like to suggest, if possible, to make a video on how to connect a flatbed scanner and scan directly to Access, if possible. Best regards. Well, Mohammed, there is an answer and it comes in the form of Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library. Now the Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library is a COM object library that is already built into Windows. And as far as I know, it started in Windows XP. It might have been a little earlier, but it's available in Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. It's commonly called the WIA, and it's probably a very recognizable interface because a lot of different software uses WIA in order to interact with your app with your uh, with your flatbed scanners. It also allows you to interact with digital cameras. But we're not going to deal with that right now. We're just going to work with flatbed scanners. We're going to use some VBA code and the WIA library in order to go ahead and interact with my own scanner. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a module here called mod scanner. And I've got my declarations already set up, my option compare database and option explicit. And the first thing that we're going to want to go ahead and do is create a public subroutine that's going to be accessible from anywhere in our application in order to go ahead and access the scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and do a public sub, and I'm going to call it get image. Now, you can have several different applications of grabbing images from your uh, from your scanner and putting them in access. There are lots of different ways to, to, you know, utilize an image once you get it. But for my purposes and the example that I'm going to demonstrate here, I'm just going to go ahead and prompt the user for a location to store that image. And then we're going to go ahead and access the WIA library, get an image, and then store it to the location that the user has selected. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dim a file location as a string. And this will be the variable that I hold the information about where the user is selected to store this file at. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and dim a diag file, I'm going to call it diag file, as a file dialog. Now the file dialog, if you recall, is a file dialog box that is kind of the default prompt for prompting a user where they want to store uh, a file at. Now I am going to go ahead and do a set diag file equal to application dot file dialog and I'm going to pass in MSO file dialog save as. Oops, it would help if I didn't fat finger it there. There we go. Now there is one drawback to the file dialog save as and that is that you cannot set filters for the user. So we cannot by de we cannot set a default value or default extension that the user will have to save the file as. But we can do a couple of things to try to hint to them the type of file that we want them to save it as. And in the case of WIA, the default image type is a bitmap. So we need to do a couple of things to prompt the user to actually save the file as a bitmap file. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is set diag file title equal to save bitmap file as dot dot dot. All right. So I'm kind of hoping that they might read the title save bitmap file as and maybe they'll get a clue what that means. But you know what? Beyond that, I can also do this. I can set the initial file name equal to star.bmp. Hopefully when they see that and they go to type in the name that they want to save the file as, they'll notice that it has to be a BMP file and that may be enough to suggest to them. Now I could put in additional checks. I could say, you know, if the selected items, you know, of the file dialog, uh, let me start with diag file here, selected items, you know, if, uh, if it's, uh, you know, not a bitmap type, then I could suggest to them that they try again. But I'm not really going to deal with that for right now. I'm just going to go ahead and hope that they use their best judgment. 
obviously that's not exactly the best best route to go with all of your users but for right now this is just an example and hopefully you can figure out what it is you want to put in your own application all right so I've got my title I've got my initial file name let's go ahead and show this diag file and I'm gonna do it as first as an if diag file dot show then and if now I'm just making sure that I terminate my if statement there. Now remember the show method on the diag file object there will return true if the user has selected something it will return false if they clicked on cancel or if they didn't ch if they didn't put in anything. So diag file dot show should return true if they've if they type something in. So if that's the case then I want to go ahead and set my file location equal to whatever the diag file dot selected items equals. Now I do need to access the first object in that collection and and because uh, selected items is a collection of a base one. It is not a base zero, it is a base one. So I need to use the first index on selected items in order to grab that file location. So now I've got my file location set now it's time for me to go ahead and get the WIA library going. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a tools references and I'm going to scroll down here and look for I went too far here. It is under Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now from here I can go ahead and dim an object I'm going to call it uh, scan diag as a new WIA. Now, WIA is the name of the library that we're accessing. So, WIA dot, and I can do common dialog. That is the actual dialog window that will appear to the user that gives them different options like do they want to select color? Do they want grayscale? Is this a text document? what's the size, what's the image quality, etc, etc. So that's the dialog window that we're going to be prompting the user with. And it is an object called common dialog on the WIA library. Now we also need to dim another object. I'm going to just call it image. And it's going to be a type of WIA image file. From there, now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and set my image equal to whatever the output of the scan diag object will be when it runs this special method called show acquire image. The show acquire image method will return a type of image file. And so that's where I'm going to set my image file equal to whatever the method is that show acquire image returns back. There are different options available to me. I'm just going to show you here real fast. There are different types of devices, including a camera device and a scanner or a video. Okay, so there are different types of devices you can select from the WIA library. There are, of course, other options that you're welcome to go ahead and explore. I'm just going to go ahead and use the default for right now. And from there, I've now set my image object, my image file object, equal to whatever the show acquire image function returns back. Now from there, there is another method that I need to call, and it exists on the image object, on the image file object, and it is save file. And guess what it needs in order to save? It needs a file name. Well, it's a good thing I had the user put one in, because now we've got an image file location to store this image at, and that should do it. So hopefully, let me just go ahead and hit debug here and compile. Everything looks good. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up. I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint there and set a breakpoint here. And well, let's go ahead and run our get image method here, or get image sub. All right. So let's go through the, it's going to dim a couple of objects for us. It's going to set that diag file to a save as dialog box. It's going to change the title and initial file name, and then it's going to show it. And there we go. So I've already got it set by default. My last time I opened this up, it was in my test folder. 
There's my bitmap file name, so let's go ahead and try it as test.bmp. Click Save, and there we go. Now our file location will be set to whatever it was that I selected there, and then it's dimming a couple of our WIA objects. Now I'm going to set the image, which is an image file object, equal to whatever the show acquire image method returns back, and now we're getting prompted. All right, so let's go ahead and just click a quick little preview here. All right, that looks good. That's what I've got in my in my scanner here. So let's go ahead and scan it. Bear with it a moment here. It's going to have to scan. Don't you love how long technology takes sometimes? All right, good enough. All right, now let's go ahead and run that save file method on our image object. And we're going to pass in the string of the file location that the user selected. And we're good to go. It successfully saved. And there we go. Now if I go to my computer, go into my C drive, test folder, and there's our test bitmap. Lo and behold, there we go. Those are some uh, case, um, some information about a computer case that I have purchased recently. All right, good deal. All right. Now, there is one other thing I'd like to show you. This, and going to our references and selecting Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library is not entirely required. What you can do instead is I'm going to go ahead and comment these out. I'm going to dim these as just regular old objects. Oops. dim image as object. All right, so we've got a couple of objects that we're going to create here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something called late binding. All right, this allows you the freedom and the flexibility of not having to go through and go up to the tools and references and then setting the reference to the Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library. Instead, all you have to do is do this. And you can see that what's in per, what's in the uh, parentheses here and in a string is the same as what I have down here. So all you have to do is create a object, just a regular old object in memory, and then you can use the set statement in order to set with the create object method or function, I should say, it will return back that type of object. And now we do not need the reference anymore to the Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library. And this will still work. So let's go ahead and save it, debug it. Let's go ahead and run it. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and save it as something else. Let's try test two. Let's make a grayscale picture. And we're just going to scan it in. We're not going to do that whole preview stuff that automatically resizes it for me. It's going to do the whole thing, my whole flatbed. Now I could just go ahead and go right into my computer here, go to my test folder, and there is test 2. There's my image that I just scanned in. So it works identically to if you if you go up to the tools, references, and go through and find that Microsoft uh, and do the or the Microsoft image acquisition library. You can do that through the resource uh, the references here, or you can just go ahead and use the create object function in order to create one 
uh, as long as you know what the type is to pass in. If you do not know what the type is to pass in, go ahead and go up to your tools and references and do just like I did, find out what it is by going and instantiating it and creating it like that. Now I can just copy and paste this and put it right in here. And that works. All right. So I hope you guys have enjoyed how to uh, learning how to grab an image from your flatbed scanner. Uh, I look forward to having more questions to answer for you.